Hi, this is Randy from Friday's Golf, and welcome to this week's edition of Over Easy. I want to start out by thanking everyone who watched last week's episode and checked out the links that I provided for the band Desert Train, who gives me all my music for my channel for absolutely no cost, gives it to me for free, and I appreciate the feedback and everyone uh, and all the nice things you said because anything I can do for these guys, it means a lot to me because, like I said, they help me shape my channel into what it is today. So I'm going to put the links in the description again for their music. I believe there's two songs that you can download for free, absolutely nothing, so might as well check it out. Uh, but before I get to the questions, I do want to announce that I shot my very first course vlog. And uh, I'm going to post it here in the next couple days, and I'm kind of anxious to see what you guys think about it. It, it, uh, it was interesting. Uh, I'm really basing whether I do any more on your guys' response uh, and your feedback to it, because I, I want to buy some new equipment and, and a tripod and some other things to help me make it uh, look better. But before I invest that, I do want to make sure that you're even interested in watching me play golf. So I'm going to post it here in the next couple of days. Looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say about that. And uh, uh, I don't know. Hopefully you like it. But without any further delay, let's jump into the questions. Ten minutes. Go. All right. Derek Clark, as a left-handed player, do you think it is beneficial to find a left-handed instructor? Yeah. I mean, I could see it being beneficial because they see the game on the same side of the ball as you, but I don't think it's necessary. Uh, you can transcribe the swing from left to right fairly easy, and, and actually as a right-handed instructor, they could mirror you and be on the other side of you and actually swing with you and show you, you know, uh, different positions that you're supposed to be in. So is it necessary? No, but I could see it being beneficial to work with a left-handed instructor. Stroh's 189. I am an 11 handicap and play MP4. Should I consider going to something like the MP25s for maybe a little more forgiveness to help me break 80 more consistently? Uh, I mean, if the problem is ball striking with your irons, then yeah, I would go for something more forgiving uh, like the MP25s. And at 11 handicap, you're probably not... I mean, you're, you probably wouldn't want to play a blade. There's definitely some uh, cavity back irons out there that are player looking irons that would, I, I think, give you a little bit more consistency as far as that's concerned. But if you hit your MP4 as well, keep hitting them and just maybe work on some short game and putting. And I, I think you'll you'll see your scores go in the 70s more consistently. Um, next question, Andrea Echevarria. I'm horrible at pronouncing names. I'm sorry. I'm getting into changing my own grips and would like to know the difference between a 58R and a 60R. My old grips are 58R and no one seems to stock them in my area. Everything is 60R, so it seems. Are they interchangeable? Yeah, they're interchangeable. And the main difference between a, a 0.58 and a 0.60 is the inner diameter of the grip is what they're talking about. Uh, 0.58 uh, is a little bit smaller, but the walls are a little bit thicker. So if you put that 0.58 on a 0.60 shaft as far as the butt diameter, uh, it'll inflate a little bit more and get a little bit larger, uh, but blind test, it probably wouldn't notice the difference, in my opinion. Keenan Morrow Golf, is a 5 degree gap between my 21 degree utility iron and my 26 degree 5 iron too much? My local pro says there's about a yard and a half difference per degree, but that doesn't sound right. Should I fill the gap? Hmm. I, I wouldn't base filling the gap on... The degrees between the irons, uh, or in the iron and the hybrid. So if you hit your five iron, you know, 190 yards, and you hit your 21 degree hybrid 215 yards, then yeah, you probably want to find something to to sneak in between the two there. But as long as everything flows, I wouldn't really worry about the actual degrees between the two, as long as the yardages match up. And as far as the degree and a half, or the yard and a half per degree, that's really based on club head speed and ball speed. The faster the club head speed, the larger that gap's going to be. So that doesn't really make sense, unless he knows your particular swing. Uh, Mark Blades asks, the news of the new Titleist C16 driver at $1,000, do you think you will sell many? No. And I can say that with 100% certainty. I, <laughs> this kind of ridiculous power play move on Titleist's part to come out with a $1,000 driver. I mean, the idea of golf is to make it more appealing to the masses and by coming out with a thousand dollar driver they're obviously not trying to sell many of these things it's more the ooh ah look at our ferrari golf club here so i don't know what titleist is thinking on this but uh, apparently it's not market share kyle ellis 
Randy, love the new questions and answers features on your channel. Miss the music videos. Me too. Um, waiting for Ping to release a new product. On the subject of Ping, why is it that so many people get fit for Ping clubs over their other companies? Do you believe that Ping offers the best fitting options for golfers and fitters? What is it that gives Ping the edge? Um, I think Ping is so popular with custom fitting is because they've been really preaching it for so long. They've been doing custom fitting for a long time. They kind of, I mean, they invented the whole color coding system, which really laid it out and explained it and made it nice and simple to use for both uh, the consumer and the club fitters themselves. But uh, what makes it, what sticks them out with the rest of the companies as far as what why they stand out so much is, is the way they do it. I mean, the, the way that they keep track of information, the fact that they the color codes on the heads of irons and, and the lengths of them and everything is stored within the serial number on the hosel. And they serial number every single club. And you can find a 15-year-old set of ping irons that has a serial number on it. Call up ping today, read that number off, and they will tell you exactly what the specs are to that club. And if you send them back to ping to get the lie angles changed or the shafts changed, they'll actually rewrite the information in the serial number to match what they were they are built to. So it just, it's crazy how much, uh, how much work and effort they put into it. But hey... It pays off because you're right. They're one of the best in the business, and uh, I think they will continue to be because of that. Keenan Morrow Golf. I'm currently looking for some software for my Mac that can record my swing so I can analyze it against pro players. Do you know of any that I can download? I should have researched this because I don't. Um, someone respond to Keenan in the description section and let him know of uh, some software he can use to analyze side by side, I assume, is what you're trying to do so you can compare your swing to some pros. So. Hopefully someone helps you out. I'm sorry I can't. Uh, Nay14222. What is a good slash free range finder stat tracker app? This is back to back. I have no clue. I'm sorry. I should have looked into that. I don't have a lot of, of the technical stuff as far as uh, uh, on my phone for tracking stats and stuff like that because uh, I just I never got into that. But... Um, Someone else help uh, Nay one four two 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 on a, a good rangefinder stat tracker app that doesn't cost anything. I don't know of any. Most of the ones I know cost money. Uh, Thomas Nicholson, I am a right-handed golfer and I have a strong left-hand grip, and wear a small glove. That sounds like me. And could grip thickness help with strike because my miss is a pull left? And what thickness of grip would you recommend? Well. I can recommend you stay with the men's standard size grip because I am the same ballpark. I have a small hand, but I also miss uh, my shots predominantly left. So I would not put a larger grip on there to try to self-correct that because you're going to get into the, unless you have maybe arthritis or something, but you're going to get into the, the whole trying to manipulate the golf club to make it work better for you. And that's, it's not really going to. It's, it's not going to make a world of difference making the grip larger. Uh, might loosen the grip pressure. It might help you out there. So if you're going to do it, do one club. Do like a 7-iron or an 8-iron and hit with it and see because you don't want to invest all that money into regripping your set if it's not going to work. Kyle Ellis. Randy, on Jordan's club, the driving iron, the 712U, 21 degree, he used to tee off with on several holes at Augusta. Does it come with the graphite design Tour ADDI 105X shaft or as a custom option from Tylus, or is it a custom-made club for him? Uh, no, they, you can put you can probably put that shaft in there, no problem, from Tylus. Uh, it's going to cost a ton of money because that shaft is super expensive, and I know it's not a stock option. So, uh, yeah, get get ready to pay upwards of probably $150 to $200 extra for that shaft because it is a high-dollar custom-end shaft. Uh, Stin Day Shepper, what is your favorite golf-watching snack? pretzels pretzel nuggets not like regular pretzels the pretzel nuggets themselves sourdough Ugh. i eat like a bag of those uh over a, the stint of a golf tournament um andrew nelson do you think that the Ryder cup will be just as big as the masters who do you think will have the strongest team i think the Ryder cup's a lot larger than really any major because it's you know it's it's all of europe and it's all of america all watching golf at the same time um as far as a stronger team, it always seems like Europeans have more. I don't. Know, it seems like they make better teammates. Um, uh, having said that, I, I don't know who's going to have the stronger team this year. But it, it's it's crazy because you have people like Ian Poulter who you just kind of you know meanders through a season. But as soon as the Ryder Cup comes around, he's like 
the best player in the world. Like it's it's insane. He's like the guy that stands out every single Ryder Cup. It seems like that he just takes it to a level that he for some reason doesn't reach in any other platform besides the Ryder Cup. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Deuce two. My swing speed is 115 to 110 to 115. Quick tempo. 165 mile an hour ball speed. 2400 RPMs of spin. If you could build me a driver from the current 2015-16 heads, what would you pick and what shaft would you pair with? That is a loaded question because I don't really know all the specifics. Um, you give me some information here, but since you asked the question, I'm going to try to answer the best I can. Let's put in with 165 an hour ball speed, 2400 RPMs of spin. Um, I don't know the launch angle, but I would say that you should check out the Callaway Sub-Zero which is a crazy low spinning head and then plug in the matrix black tie into that thing and you'll knock that spin rate down because at 165 mile hour ball speed we want that spin rate to be closer to 2000 and I think you could accomplish that but if your launch angle is super low then we might need to tweak some other things in there to try to to compensate for that but yeah sub zero black tie and do it in the X flex for sure uh let's see if that works McCormack asked the timer, but I said his name, so I'm going to ask his question to end the series here. Uh, McCormack, have you found that the M Mizuno MP5 irons to be a very forgiving blade? I'm looking to purchase the set this year and have only hit a couple of times, but love the feel. The carry distance on the shot I hit were what I was wanting for them for gapping concerns, but like everybody else, my swing changes day to day. I'm a low single-digit handicapper, and I strike my irons with decent but not perfect consistency. Um, McCormack, Matt, I don't know how to say your name, but you know who you are. Um, yeah, I, I'm a, I was in a similar situation when I was uh, purchasing irons, and I'm telling you that it, the blades, they feel so good, and they look so good, but on the days that are, just aren't working for you, they're just not going to do much as far as to help you uh, consistency wise. Uh, so with the days that you're not striking it well, you, you're gonna be better off finding something. You don't have to go big cavity as far as in the back of it there. As a single digit handicap, yeah, you can play the MP5s, but you know, look into something that's a little bit more of a, a, a muscle cavity, something that, that's gonna give you a little bit of leniency if you strike it off in the center there. So that's all I have time for. This week, uh, I will be back next week, so ask your questions in the comment section below, and I will add them to my list, and we will continue this charade then. So until then, I'll see you later.